Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared minus 2x dx. And I'm going to give you a warning before you just jump right in. It's an improper integral. Okay, so this is the trickier kind of improper integral because it's not yelling at you since one of the limits is not infinity or negative infinity. You have to pay attention to what the domain of the integrand is. So notice since I have x squared minus 2x in the denominator, if I factor that x, x minus 2, I see that x can't be 0 or positive 2. And unfortunately, 0 is on the interval from negative 1 to 1, where we're going to be evaluating the antiderivative. So what do we do? We're going to have to split it up at 0. So we're going to have one integral that goes from negative 1 to 0. And we'll have dx over x squared minus 2x plus, and then the other one's going to go from 0 to 1. And then same thing, dx over x squared minus 2x, OK? And then we'll evaluate each of them separately, but we're going to evaluate them as limits. So remember, when you have improper integrals, I'm going to rewrite this first one as the limit. I'll say as a approaches 0 from the left of negative 1 to a of dx over x squared minus 2x. And then the other one, let's use a different variable, um, will approach this time 0 from the right. And I'll use b, b to 1. You could use whatever you want, t, um, something else. Now, a lot of the time my students say they get confused knowing whether or not you're approaching from the left or from the right. So just think about it this way. Like, for example, this first one, the interval, the limits of integration are from negative 1 to 0. Staying on that interval, the only way you can approach 0 is from the left side. If you were to draw it on a number line, for example, here's negative 1, here's 0, you can only get there from the left. If you approach 0 from the right, you're outside this interval. And then same thing here, this time the interval is from 0 to 1. The only way to approach it and stay within the interval is from the right side. Okay, the nice thing is, even though we do have to do partial fraction decomposition, we just do it once so we can use it for both integrals. So we have 1 over, I know the denominator factors into x, x minus 2. So those are two linear factors. We'll have a over x plus b over x minus 2. Multiply through by the LCD, which is xx minus 2. So I have 1 equals a times x minus 2 plus b times x. Let me sub in x equals 2. I'll get 1 equals a times 0 plus 2b. So b is a half. And then if I sub in x is 0, I have 1 equals a times negative 2 plus b times 0. So a is negative 1 half. Good? Okay, so it's really up to you. Um, I'll call this integral number one, integral number two, which one you want to do first. Remember, in order for the integral to converge, both of these limits need to exist as finite numbers, okay? If either of them approaches infinity or negative infinity, or if the limit doesn't exist, then the whole integral doesn't exist. You don't even have to do the other limit, frankly. So I'll start off with number two because actually it has a nicer, it's just nicer to evaluate. Um, I did both though. If you care to see both, maybe I'll, I'll do both. They're just a wee bit different. Okay, where did it go? Hold on, I'm scrolling through. There, here's integral number two. It was the limit as b approaches zero from the right, integral from b to one, and then we have a is negative one half over x plus b is one half over x minus two, right? dx. Okay, I wanna clean it up though before we evaluate the antiderivative. So let me take the one half out and then we'll go b to one and then let me put one over x minus two first minus one over x dx. Okay. And then both of these antiderivatives is just going to be ln absolute value of the denominator. So we have ln absolute value x minus 2 minus ln absolute value of x. And then this gets evaluated from b to 1. So here we go. Limit b approaches 0 from the right 1 half times. This will be ln absolute value 1 minus 2 minus ln absolute value of 1 
minus ln absolute value b minus 2 plus, I'm just distributing that negative all at once, ln absolute value of b. Okay, let's see what's going on. So this is negative 1, but then we're taking the absolute value, so it's fine. So ln of 1, that's just 0. Then I've got another ln of 1, that's 0. Then we have ln of b is approaching 0 from the right, minus 2, so that's negative 2. But this is just going to approach negative ln of positive 2 once I take the absolute value. And then plus ln of b. Okay, b is approaching again, 0 from the right. So think of the graph of ln of x. Do you have it burned in your brain? You should. If you're a calculus student, you must. Oh my goodness. So ln of x is going to go through 1, 0. Vertical asymptote, y-axis, looks something like this. That'll do the job as far as evaluating limits. If you're approaching 0 from the right, where's ln of x going? Yes, to negative infinity. So this whole term here is approaching negative infinity. So let's see what we got going on. I have a 1 half times negative ln of 2 minus infinity. Well, negative infinity minus a number, it's still going to go to negative infinity. Even if I multiply by a half, it's still going to negative infinity. So what do I say? Well, this limit doesn't exist as a finite number, so therefore the improper integral is divergent. I don't even have to check the other one. Remember there was two parts, one and two, since we split it up. I don't even have to check the other one. It doesn't matter where it goes. This integral is going to be divergent, okay? Now, what if you had picked integral one? It's fine. It, you would have gotten to the same place, actually. So this limit also doesn't exist as a finite number. So limit a approaches zero from the left. It's very similar. Negative one to a. I'm already gonna put in the partial fraction decomp. So we have one half. It was one over x minus two minus one over x dx, right? Okay, so limit a approaches zero from the left. One half, this will be ln absolute value x minus two minus ln absolute value x from negative 1 to a, and then let's see. So limit a approaches 0 from the left, 1 half, ln absolute value a minus 2 minus ln absolute value a minus ln absolute value negative 1 minus 2 plus ln absolute value negative 1. Okay, so this is just going to be 0. Negative 1 minus 2, that's negative 3, but then I take absolute value, so this is just ln 3. Okay, whatever. And then um, this first term here, a is approaching 0 from the left, that's fine. 0 minus 2, that's negative 2, but then you take absolute value, so this is approaching ln 2. And then here's where it gets good. So we've got ln absolute value of a. So yeah, a is approaching 0 from the left, but then we take the absolute value, so it's approaching zero from the right. And ln, where is it going? As the input approaches zero from the right, we know it's going to negative infinity. Very good. Now there's another minus sign sitting outside though. So actually, this whole term is going to go to positive infinity. These constants won't change that. The one half won't change that. So this limits positive infinity. Does it matter? That limit does not exist as a finite number, so then we say the improper integral is divergent or diverges, whatever. And no, positive infinity and negative infinity don't cancel each other out. You can't say that the limit exists. Remember, infinity minus infinity. Oh, that's my coffee. Um, is an indeterminate form. So they will not cancel each other out. Okay. That concludes the integral of the day. How did you do? Which integral did you think had a cleaner limit? Do you agree it was integral number two? 
And if you need a full length video lecture on improper integrals, I have several. I also have a really good video on all of the indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule, if that's something that is a little tricky for you. This is one of the hardest sections for students in Calc 2 because you have to do your integration techniques, but then you also have to use all your limit stuff that you learned in Calc 1, which might be rusty or you just didn't like it. That's totally normal. So if you need help reviewing, you've come to the right place, Math with Professor V. Don't forget to leave a comment below, even a little emoji. All the engagement helps spread this video and grow my channel, which I would appreciate so, so much. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.